All right, peeps, we're here with a summary of our trip, aren't we, Lady K? Yes, apparently we are. You come over here and stand right behind oh, this camera so, okay. we can, they can, so that the peeps can hear you. All right, I'm here. We've been gardening all day, so Lady K doesn't want to be on camera. But Well, the high point, I guess, of the trip was the giant shadow creatures people that were yep. walking. That was uh, new for me. Yeah. I don't really, I still don't, I'm still processing it. As you guys know, I tend to uh, try to talk myself out of this stuff, but it started when it was a, about daylight like it is now, and you can see these trees behind me. We had a pond behind them, so you could see the, the surface of the pond, and I noticed kind of what looks like Predator in the Predator movie. I saw a shimmering, I saw a disturbance, a little bit like the heat waves coming off from... And it was, what, 40 degrees or it was cold, so it wasn't a heat wave. Right. But I could see this thing, and what was interesting is all the anomalies that I, f I saw all would have been about uh, 10 to 12 feet tall. They were th These things were quite large. So it wasn't like, you know, there was something 20 feet tall or that there was something. They weren't floaters. Nope. So I saw the thing that was shimmering. Did you see the shimmering, too? Uh, yes, I did. Not in the area in front of the pond, but on the opposite um, opposite side of the road, I saw what it appeared to be, you know, out of the corner of my eye, like a, a, a light, an area that had almost like a little bit of a white light type of, you know, um, and then when I would look straight on it, it nothing's there, you know, but it just things that would almost catch your eye. And of course, Lady Kay didn't tell me that we were surrounded by these things. She was seeing of course them, not. She was seeing them behind us, too. So as it started getting darker, I kept seeing these disturbances pass between the gaps in the trees and uh, I had the auto recorder going but it didn't for some reason it didn't pick up our, our dialogue so that's why I'm, I'm summarizing it for you and I kept like I kept telling Lady Kay I was like well I, I gotta be seeing stuff but you were right I, I was seeing it as well but I, I've seen them in the past also but y yes don't be surprised hmm. the shadow man yes <clears throat> I have so um, so yeah, I, I've seen him before, and it just seemed like the appropriate thing. I thought it was actually really kind of cool. No, it was definitely cool. I was, I was progressively shocked. I kept seeing it over and over again, and finally, the last one that I saw was so clear. Uh, I just got done telling Ryan about this, my nephew. He's going to go up with us this weekend. I involuntarily. Oh, did you? Like all my muscles, you know, that flight yeah, or flight. Yeah, like I yeah. saw this thing. It went from, there was a gap in the trees, and what I saw was something that was 10 to 12 feet tall. Its head looked small for its body. It looked like it kind of had a, but it had massive shoulders, long arms, like a thick chest, really mm -hmm. thick through it, all black, and it passed quite quickly. It moved, I mean, it wasn't like, you know, like, NASCAR fast or anything, but it wasn't like lumbering along. That thing went between that gap. It wasn't doing the paddy walk? I love it when Mark does the paddy walk. <laughs> and when that thing, because I always kept looking down there, I'm thinking, I kept seeing these things with a regularity that I'm like, okay, this is really getting to be kind of weird. Like, am I imagining, and I, uh, Lady Kay and I was discussing it, and all of a sudden that thing crossed between those trees, and I was like, <gasps> you know, I was like, holy crap. And and then you saw the same thing at the same time I saw it. Yeah, yeah, which uh, which kind of negates the idea we both had floaters at the same time. They weren't floaters, and we weren't hallucinating. There was definitely some giant tree spirits. Yeah. No, it was very. I I like that. It was a a really nice uh, thing to happen. A really nice event. It was as if they were doing it so we could see them. Yes. I mean that's the impression I got, and it was right after I got done playing the didgeridoo. Yeah, that could have brought them in. I don't know. I'm being quite generous they, calling it play. Or maybe they, they, they showed up so you would stop. <laughs> I'm going to scare the crap out of him so he'll stop that racket. <laughs> and I still, even at that point, I and the other thing that was weird, I had remember before I started seeing things, I thought I was like freaking myself out because I started getting this kind of like, like a little bit of an uneasy feeling. Yeah. Uh, when I was up there looking down, like almost, I, I don't know what, what I can compare it to, but it, it made me uneasy. And I'm like, are these things here? The other weird thing that happened, remember the, okay, so Lady Kay decided she's going to, brave girl that she is, she went all the way down near the water 
and set up her own hammock and set up her own tarp. And so I, I bebop down there to check on her. And she's by this big granite rock. And as I go to walk over to her, it felt like I passed through a, like a force field or something. Wow. Yeah, you remember? It was weird. So I, yeah. I stepped through this thing. And it felt like I physically passed through something. And when I did, my hearing changed. And it was almost as if I had a better clarity of hearing as opposed to, you know, yeah. I have issues with my hearing anyways. So there was, the hearing changed. I could feel the physical sensation of like passing through mm -hmm. something. And then it was almost as if I was in a bubble or I was in something that was affecting the sounds that were coming from outside of that bubble. Yeah. And at the same time that happened, I, I could f hear and, and kind of feel this Woo, 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 woo. like a mechanical uh, like an engine or something it was mm -hmm. not really an engine I don't know but kind of a mechanical sound like a, a, an oscillation yeah woo, woo, woo. and I felt this pressure all around my body and it lasted long enough that I was talking to you about it yeah. and then it kind of passed and then later we saw that there was a face on that rock yeah that's a different location Right? No, we saw a little face on that rock too, but not, not the one that I posted where okay. Mark was standing next to it. So all of that occurred on uh, Friday night. And then in the morning, when Lady Kay got up, you shared your dream. Yeah, I did. Right. Dream state, yeah. Where they apparently did a healing. Yeah. Both nights, they, the second night, she woke up with her eyes closed and, and they were shining a light in her face. Apparently she didn't open her eyes, but they did a bunch of stuff to you then too, didn't they? Yes. Yes. So I tend to think now that I wasn't hallucinating because... No, no, you weren't. Because you were seeing the same hallucination that I was and then you, on top of that you had that strange... Yeah, no, no, no. There was, there was no hallucination. You know, period. But they are kind of subtle because a person could just say, oh, I just saw something out of yeah, the corner no, of my eye or something. Yeah, no, absolutely. No, definitely. I mean, and they don't have to show up at all. So, I mean, it's like a, it like, it's a magical spot. You know, what can you say? It's well, like, the forest is magical, I think. Yeah. That's, that's That place up there is especially magical. Yes. So I think we saw giant shadow plant people Bigfoots. <laughs> I don't know about the plant people. They're part. plant people, oh. darn it. My yeah. theory. I understand. Lots of other people are trying to hop on board my theory and claim <laughs> it as their own, but it's my theory, damn it. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Plant people that I think have a communal thought process because we can't find the brains in plants. I'm beginning to think the forest itself is a brain and I'm beginning to think that that's how they can mind speak, that their communication is uh, well, in the physical aspect, it's through the mycelium and the root structure, but I think in a spiritual aspect that they're linked to everybody. Yeah. And so when they go to communicate to you, that's just the way they communicate. And if you look at... But what I'm, what puzzles me is, I mean, they're, they're way intelligent because, like, the healing focused on my knees. You know what I mean? They it's focused like, on the things that you were having I, issues I, with. Actually having mm -hmm. issues with, which is really strange. I mean, actually, I never even really thought I had too much issues with my knees, but yeah, I've had issues with tendons because of that medication I took two years ago. So, so everywhere, you know, I guess it would make sense. I would, I mean, every day to day I wouldn't say, oh, I have problems with my knees, but yes, I have, I have weak tendons. Well, getting back to my communal yeah. think, when you look at the shaman, when they utilize certain plants or funguses like I'm aware of a couple different accounts of people that have ingested Amanita muscara that claimed they were able to telepathically communicate with each other while they had yeah. eaten that mushroom yeah and and from what I've from what I've studied about the shamanistic cultures in South America is that I think it it uh, I get, think when they're that state they can actually see like the areas of illness in your body yes. show up as a, as a light. ayahuasca I, I don't know. But, no, but the, uh, the, the shaman that use the ayahuasca say that they can actually see, your body becomes transparent and they can yeah. see the illnesses. And even the shaman that use uh, salvia diviniorum, the divining sage, say that they use that to, to practice healing. Mm -hmm. That's what I think a lot of, the misconception with the modern culture, because they want to connect those things to like the hippie culture of LSD. They don't realize that the shamans weren't using these things as no. a recreational mean. They were using these things in service to the yeah. community to heal people. 
Yeah. It wasn't like a tee hee hee drug type of thing, you know. And these tree people seem to be interested in, in healing us. So, yeah, I think they're tree people. I think they have group think because mm -hmm. they're a community. And I think once they key into you, that that's one of the ways that they, they communicate is through this, this group, massive group consciousness that they have. Yeah. yeah. And from my opinion, I don't know all that. I'm going to wait. I'm going to reserve. Well, I'm just happy that judgment. some people, <laughs> some prominent researchers in the community are hopping on board my theory. No, I think, I think you're finally coming along. <laughs> I'm kidding. A couple guys are, are starting to get it. They're, yeah. they're starting to catch. They used to think that they were eating deer and elk and apparently eating chicken burgers, but now they don't eat anything. Now they just absorb the sunlight during the day. Which is also my theory, because if they're plants, right. it would explain why they're primarily nocturnal, because during the day, they're keyed in somehow to that photosynthesis, and then at night, when the trees dream, they're dreaming the Sasquatch people. Oh, that's right. That's I think that's right. their dream reality, is that, that we're their dreams, kind of. I mean, I don't know if they're actually dreaming, dreaming, but... Yeah, I mean, I people know. do see them during the day, too, but primarily, most of the sightings occur, or more activity seems to be centered at night. Right. And I don't think they're... I don't think they're eating and killing stuff. I mean, I know people say, oh, they've seen them killing them, but just like I... Who knows what they're seeing? You know, all we can really talk about is, is what we're seeing, you know? And we can theorize. Well, that's true, but I mean, you can't just discredit all the eyewitnesses. I mean, I'm not, I'm not going to do that. No, but my argument was, like, if you see a Sasquatch lugging a moose on its shoulders, that doesn't necessarily mean that he killed the moose or that he's going to eat it because aliens could come down and check into my shed. I got boxes of bones out there. They could come to the conclusion, oh my God, he's killed these elk and moose and deer and he's, he's consumed them all. And actually, the truth of the matter is I just collect those things in the forest because I like them. Yeah. See? So you could have an observation. You draw a conclusion from the observation. The conclusion that you draw may not necessarily be accurate. The observation right. may be accurate, but the conclusion could be flawed. Right. If you don't have all the information. That's so true. So we'll be up there in a few more days. Hopefully we'll see the shadow, the giant shadow plant people again. <laughs> We're going to go to the location. Lady K wanted to, I probably should have listened to Lady K, but we found these rocks that were, that were st like, they weren't stacked. They were just three rocks on a stone. And I mean, it was off the side of a road, but a road that, like I was telling Ryan, probably sees maybe one or two, three people, or maybe no people on a yearly basis. I mean, it's that Probably road was, not at this time of the year, yeah. Well, even any time. I mean, during hunting season, maybe somebody might walk down through there, but why would they stop hunting, cross over the ditch, and put those rocks there? Mm -hmm. And then the tree break that we found, that something had snapped it, snapped it, and bent it, and then another maple was lodged in it. I mean, the chances of that happening... Are, are, are it's a slim. one of a kind. <laughs> one I've never seen kind. anything like that before. I no. mean, I can totally see, and I have seen in that area, other trees that were, that had been broken and then grown in, in strange shapes. But to have, you know, another tree rest on it when it could have fallen so many different places. Right. Remember last year when you saw, it was like 40, 50 feet up, there was a whole tree that was like speared on top of another big tree? Mm -hmm. That seemed more likely than what, what, well, what we saw. But we'll find out. We're taking two of my, we're taking Zachary and Ryan, two of my nephews. My nephew and my great nephew, we're going to take them up there in the woods for, I guess, two nights, three nights. So we'll have more stuff. I'm excited. Can't wait. Yeah, especially after those fun. stuff happen. All right, guys. Uh, March on plant tree people. <laughs> and if you see anybody that's, that's hopped on board my theory, Tell them that maybe they're getting it now. My my plant person, tree person theory. Maybe I should write a book. Oh, stop. <laughs> write a book and then just stop giving this information out and then wait like six months and then, you know, reveal it to everybody. Just stop making videos. That's my plan. <laughs> what do you, what, what, she, I'm getting the evil eye over here. Why are you giving me the evil eye? I just want you to behave yourself. Well, you know that's not going to happen. <laughs> that's true. <laughs>